to give you a solution. Right now, today, that time is up. There's no more giving you lies. We're not We're not black. We're not Jamaican. So we're supposed to give a warning. We're not judging you, we're warning you. Well, have we seen any change? Yeah. Have we seen anything that has changed our people? Changed our neighborhood? Hey, how you doing, brother? What's up, bro? How you doing? What's your name? Will. Will, how you doing? My name's Daniel. All praises. All praises, all praises. So you know you're an Israelite. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm got, kept getting off you. I got one question. You got a question? Yeah. Do y'all believe in baptism? You believe in baptism? Do we believe in baptism? I'm going to show you. We believe in baptism, but we believe in the baptism of the Bible. You understand? The world teaches one thing, but then the Bible teaches another. All right. We're going to get into that. Okay. Let's start off. Give me John chapter 3 and verse 3. Right? Let's get John chapter 3 and verse 3. Because which baptism are you talking about? You talking about the same baptism that John the Baptist taught? About the whole uh, <laughs> taking him and dunking him underwater and pulling him back up? Hey, uh, I'm trying to learn. Good. I don't know. You want, no, because I'm trying to. You say you believe in baptism, right? Oh, do we believe in baptism? Okay, I'm going to show you the baptism we believe in. And then uh, we get back, get back to what you was talking about. That question. Read that. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, uh -huh. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, uh -huh. except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So, so Christ, when he was on the scene, right, he said that except a man be born again, he will not see the kingdom of God. When he was going into that, do you know, um, hold that, what's that, John... Well, Christ said, John, John, one, four. Yeah. Give me that, John four and one. Watch this. Read that. The book this, this is what Christ was getting into when he was saying, um, "Except a man be born again." Right? Read that. The book of John, chapter four, verse one. Come on. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. Read on. Though Jesus himself baptized not the Pharisees. So Pharisees had heard how John, um, Jesus Christ had baptized more people than John the Baptist. Because that teaching of water baptism, right, dunking someone and cleansing them from their sins, was symbolic and it was taught by John the Baptist. But right here it says that Jesus Christ baptized more than John, though he has not baptized. Meaning he has not did the same thing that John the Baptist was teaching, right. the dunking of the water. So let's see what type of baptism Christ was teaching, right? This is the teaching of Jesus the Christ, what type of baptism he taught, right? The book of John, chapter 15, verse 3. Come on. Now ye are clean through the word. Through the what? Through the word. See, Christ believed, Christ taught and believed that the cleansing was his word that's what he was clean through not just the dunking of the water because why when um they were doing those things did that actually change the people taking taking a so-called what let's say um a sodomite right you take the sodomite you dunk him in the water and he he, he gets back up and does what he's gonna do the same thing right that's what the, a lot of the uh, churches teach now to get baptized with that way, symbolically. But Christ saw further than that. He knew that they needed to be cleansed through this word, the washing of the mind, right? And even though they do teach, let's say they teach the water baptism, Matthew right. chapter three, verse six. Then we gonna get Ephesians, read that. The book of Matthew chapter three, verse six. And were baptized of him in Jordan. See, this one was John the Baptist actually baptizing people the symbolic way, dumping them in the water, right? This was the way they did it. So even according to the Bible, 
like how they do in the churches, they still not doing it the correct way. Right. Even if you wanted to do it the symbolic way, right? Because this is how we did it. Watch. Listen, read. Confessing their sin. See, he baptized them in the Jordan and they were confessing their sins. They don't do that in the church today. Because I, I, I remember when I was in the uh, so-called, I don't know what church it was called, but when I was in there and uh, I got baptized like that. Pastor never asked me where I was going off. He never asked me to confess anything. They just dunked me in water. Exactly. Because sometimes, uh, that was it on that? Uh, Colossians chapter three, verse eight. Sometimes you have to understand that there are many doctrines out here, many teachings, but you have to question, is it actually according to the Bible? Did Christ get baptized? Of course. Yeah. Of course, read that. Book of Colossians, chapter two, verse eight. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. That's why Christ tells you to beware of those things. Question it. Actually find out, okay, this is what you're teaching. Is it actually according to the Bible? Right. And if it's not, beware of those things. Because a lot of men have have been the that has been their downfall because they followed men. Right. Can't follow men. Right? Huh? Of course. You're not gonna you shouldn't follow your follow follow your oppressor. Same person that's teaching you teaching you what? Jesus Christ is so-called Caucasian. Yeah, that's what the Romans. Right. You know what I'm saying? The Romans so all right. All right, you got you asked me a couple questions, right? And I got to it. So now I'm gonna ask you a question. You ready? How long have you known you as an Israelite? For two years. Two years? Okay, what tribe you from? You from the tribe of Judah, right? So for two years, how much work have you put in to start this change? Start that turning from the wickedness? When I found out. I when you found out? Yeah, especially when I was in the Okay, so I got a question. What about this law? Give me Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Yeah. Give me Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Cause I don't know. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna accuse you or anything. Cause you, I, you might not have heard it, right? But even though two years is a very extensive amount of time to be in the Word, so you should heard this, right? Give, read that. The Book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Come on. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. So you know you're supposed to have fringes on. From. You don't know where to get it from? No. Hold on. You don't know where to get fringes from? Uh, give me, I'm going to show you something. Give me Ecclesiastes chapter, hold that. Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 7, and I, I believe it's what, verse 12? Two, two walk together? Four and nine. Four and nine. Give me that. Ecclesiastes four and nine. Bring it out. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter four, verse nine. Three. Two are better than one. God says what? Two are better than one. Do you congregate with anyone? Yeah. You surround yourself with righteous brothers? Yeah. And those brothers have not helped you get fringes? You just told me it's too hard. Because they sell fringes at Walmart, right. at yeah. Joanne's, Joanne's Fabric, right. right? And even if, listen, brother, even if they don't sell fringes, you can cut fringes on your shirt. Right. You can take a border of blue, a ribbon, and glue that thing around the shirt and cut it. I have a couple shirts like that. Right. Yeah, we call them, what they call them? Oh, a poor man fringes. Right. <laughs> you don't got, I don't got the bread this week, bro. I can't go buy no fringes. So I don't put a ribbon around that thing and start to cut me some fringes. Right. That's right. right? But re this is why we bringing this out. If you had those, bro those righteous brothers around you, they would help you. Right. Just like we just did, right? Yeah. Let's hold on. Let's finish the scripture. I'm gonna let you get that out. Read Ecclesiastes chapter four, verse nine. Come on. Two are better than one Read. because they have a good reward for their labor. They have a good reward for their labors because they're correcting one another. They're showing each other how they're gonna endure until Christ come back, so they can make the kingdom. That's right. I'm gonna walk with my brother. Right. You understand? We both gonna get there. Right? Read on. For if they fall. 
the one will lift up his fellow. That's the labor and the reward. If I fall, my brother gonna come and correct me. If I'm short, dang, I can't buy no fringes this week. My brother gonna help me out and get it. Right. He gonna help me cut my shirt if I if he have to. Right? Read. But woe and to him that is alone. You know what woe means? What what does woe mean? Destruction. It says destruction to him that is alone. He has no man to correct him. He has no man to show him charity. He has no man to endure with him. He's by himself. You understand? That's a losing battle. That's it on that? Read. But woe to him that is alone. When he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Because he has no one to help him. Right? Uh, Psalms 119 and 59. Psalms 119, 59. <laughs> well, we, we go to wherever our people are. Just like uh, we came here and we ran into you. You see? Because we need to talk to our people. So we go, hey, we go to wherever our people are. We might be here today. We're gonna be in Fort Lauderdale tomorrow. Right. We all across the globe. Remember, the gospel says it has to be spread to the four corners of the earth. That's right. That's right. So God is establishing his prophets exactly where he says it needs to be, to the four corners of the earth. So we're gonna go to wherever our people are. That's right. And we're gonna strive with them and help them get the kingdom. That's right. Because we're ready to get out of this place. Right. right. So my question, after we, like, after we figure out all our people, what's next? what's next? Let's bring it up. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 59. I thought on my ways. What's next is to start thinking on your ways. Right, right. That's what's next. Think about it. It says, uh, scripture says, for oppression maketh a wise man mad. You're going to think, damn, look at the conditions of my people. Right. Damn, look at the way they act. Damn, look at myself. Right. What am I doing to help? Bring it out. What am I doing to change the conditions? Am I applying God's commandments? Right. Because those were the causes of those conditions, right? Am I loving my neighbor as I love myself? That's what you need to do, that's next. Think on the ways. Think on, okay, this is my nationality. I know why we are in the conditions that we in. So now what do I need to do to change? Change myself? and change my environment, my my brothers and my sisters. Read on. I thought on my way on. and turned my feet into thy testimonies. And then he gave you the next step after that. Once you thought on those things, now, become, now applies action. You have to bring forth action. Scripture says, fruits of repentance. You have to bring forth fruits of repentance. You have to change, right? Read on. I made haste. And then, and then after that, he said, once you thought on it, once you said, okay, now it's time to apply action, when you apply that action, hurry up. Right. Don't take your time. Don't say, well, uh, I'll just do it tomorrow. Because then you know what? Then that turns into next week. Right. Then next week turns into a month. Then a month turns into two years. Mm. Right? Bring it out. Read on. I made haste uh -huh. and delayed not Read. to keep thy commandment. To do what? To keep thy commandment. That's what you need to hurry up and do. You need to hurry up and get a border of uh, fringes and a border of blue. That's right. You need to hurry up and do that thing. Why? Because you never know when your, your Lord and Savior is coming back. Right. Right? You never know. And let me ask you a question. Do you think you're going to be judged by that, that action? Yeah. Of course you are. Of course you are. You are going to be judged by that. Right. right? So, throughout this tribulation, give me Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 21. Bring it out. Bring it out. Huh? We're going to get judged by the nations? We're getting judged by the nations. God is using every other nation to, to pass judgment on his chosen people. Right? Yeah. Of course. Real quick, real quick. Because I'm in here. What's going on, bro? What's going on? Hey, I'm, I'm going to read you real quick. Matthew 24. Hold on, I'm still right here. I'm going to be real quick. I do want to say something real quick. Matthew 24, Matthew 25, verse 14. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 25, 
verse 14. Here we know. For the kingdom of heaven. So Christ is speaking. Christ gave a parable about the kingdom of heaven, about his return. Read that again. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country. So a kingdom of heaven is like a man leaving to a far country. He's talking about himself. He's going into a far country, meaning when he was when he died, he went to the father, sat at the right hand of the father. Read. Who called his own servants and delivered into them his goods. His goods. And and into one he he gave five talents. So this man called his servants, who are God's servants? The Israelites. Called his servants and gave his servants all his goods, which would be the understanding, the laws, and the statutes. All his goods. He gave one servant, how much? Five talents. He gave one servant five talents, right? To another, two. He gave another servant two. And to another, one. All these talents is, represents understanding. Represents the knowledge of God. Read. To every man according to his severe ability. So he gave every servant knowledge. Read. And straightway took his journey. And he went and took his journey. Watch this. Then he that had received the five talents uh -huh. went and traded with the same uh -huh. and made them other five talents. So the man that he gave five talents to, he doubled it. Meaning that he put in the work. He put in the work and five more talents raised up. Meaning that he sold the seed and he reaped the harvest. Meaning people woke up. People got to understand it. Read on. And likewise, he that had received two, uh -huh. he also gained another two. So the one that had two talents, he put in the work. Read on. But he that had received one uh -huh. went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. He did what? Hid his Lord's money. So now, with that understanding, what would be hiding your what would be hiding the knowledge God gave you? Bring it out. What would be hiding it? Right. So give me an example of how you can hide the knowledge God gave you. Huh? Remember, the first guy he gave five. That that servant doubled it, meaning he put in the work. He told the people he he uh uh what like I said Matthew what says uh, he let his light shine. People repented off of that. The second guy he gave uh how much two, and he put in the work. Then the one servant that he gave one he hid it. So give me example knowledge. If you're not what, if you're not talking, if you're not putting in the work. If you're not being an example, right. you hiding your knowledge. Right. Watch this. After a long time, the Lord of those servants come. So he said, after a long time, Christ came back, read. And reckoned with them. And then he spoke with them, read. And so he had that received five talents, uh -huh. came and brought other five talents, uh -huh. saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Come on. Behold, I have gathered, I have gained beside them five talents more. So the first servant that came, he said, Lord, you gave me five, right. I doubled it. Right. Here's ten. Right. Watch this. His Lord said unto him, he well done. What did he say? Well done. Well done, my servant. Read. Thou good and faithful servant. Thou good and faithful servant. Watch this. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. Uh -huh. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Enter into the kingdom. Read. He also that had received two talents Come on. came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Uh -huh. Behold, I have gained two other talents. So the, the next one said, Lord, you gave me two? I doubled it. Here's four. Watch this. His Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. Well done, my faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Watch this. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent. Now, we get to the one that received the one, and what he did with that talent? He hid it. In this, in this, remember, this is a parable. In this understanding, that's going into not putting in the work. Not letting your light shine. Right. They, not, now we talk about that man. Read. Came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, Come on. reaping where thou hast not sown, Come on. 
and gathering where thou hast not scrolled. So this servant tried to make an excuse. He said, Lord, I know you. You are all still man. I was scared of you. Right. Try to make an excuse why he didn't put it to work. Read. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent. In the hid earth. the knowledge. Hid the understanding. Didn't put in no work. Read. Lo, there thou hast had thine in, in thine. His Lord answered and said unto him. Now watch this. Watch what Christ answered this guy. Read. Yep. Thou wicked. Thou what? Thou wicked. Thou what? Thou wicked. Christ called him wicked. That's right. Read. And slothful. And what? And slothful. What does it mean to be slothful? Bring it out. Bring it out. Huh? Uh-uh. Slothful. Can we look that word up? You got a phone? Oh, oh never mind. I'll just tell you. It means lazy. Okay. Christ said, you wicked, lazy nigga. Right. Read. Thou wicked and slothful servant. Thou knowest that I reap where I have sown not, and gather where I have not scrolled. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanger. He said, you should have put in the word. You better off giving it to somebody else. Right. The knowledge you have, if you ain't benefit, if you ain't showing your people, it's better that you don't even have the knowledge. Right. Read. And then at my coming, I should have received my own with usury. Come on. Watch this. Take therefore the talent from him uh -huh. and giving it to him Christ said take his knowledge and give it to somebody else read which has ten talents uh -huh. for unto every one that hath shall be given uh -huh. and he shall have abundance uh -huh. and but from him that have not that have not shall be taken away read. even that which he has right. and cast ye the unprofitable yes, servant cast ye the unprofitable servant into utter darkness into destruction so Christ gave a parable saying that if you know you Israel, you ain't putting in the work, you ain't making it. Right. You know you Israel, you ain't keeping God's commandments, bro, you ain't making it. Right. That's the parable that Christ is going over because he gave you a lot. He gave you a talent. He gave you a talent. You know who you are. You know who your enemies is. You know who your brothers are. Who that sign up? Because your brothers are the blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. That's right. That's who you are. God says now that you got your talent, you got to reap. You got to benefit. Right. You got to bring back double. Right. When he come back and you give him the same talent that he gave you, he going to put you to death, bro. All right? That's in the Bible. I, I just want to bring that out, bro. Just some motivation. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org